Good morning. Happy Tuesday morning. Thank you for joining us in the prayer closet today. And uh, I trust you have a full and productive day in store for you, uh, whether at work or whether at the mall shopping for Christmas. I hope you're on top of it, and I hope that your time spent in the prayer closet will assist in uh, getting you on top of it and ahead of the game. We are going to be touching base on verses 5 and 6 of Psalm 91. We're kind of working up to uh, verse 11, where we started all this uh, way back in March of uh, 2020. And uh, if you recall, uh, after uh, Christmas Eve, we're going to take a little bit of a break and uh, uh, evaluate this time of the year is uh, the time we take at Parkway to evaluate the things that we're doing and how uh, good they're, they are doing or how poorly they're doing, if there's anything we need to start or stop or continue. And uh, the devotionals are a part of that. We basically started them to uh, get us through COVID. And uh, everything was shut down, including church, if you remember. And uh, this was a, a, a way to uh, connect and um, stay involved uh, without, you know, breaking the, the curfews and all of that. Uh, of course, we're still in COVID. Can you believe it after all this time? But uh, we still want to evaluate uh, how this ministry is doing and it would be so helpful to me. Some of you have already responded, and I so appreciate that. Others of you, I would love to hear from uh, whether or not this has been uh, profitable and what we could do different, or if it's something that's run its course. Uh, my email address, again, is jot at parkwayroanoke.com. Whether you're uh, a resident of Roanoke or whether you're in one of the states that that's uh, spread out all over. There's about 13 states and one country uh, that uh, people have been plugging in. So uh, re I, would, I would love to hear from you regardless of where you live. And uh, just give me some feedback <coughs> on if this is something that we need to continue. My last uh, time with us this year will be Christmas Eve and uh, Christmas Eve morning and I want to read uh, the Christmas story with you there and have prayer over you and your family uh, for the following day. Let's uh, have a word of prayer, and then we're going to jump into these two verses in Psalm 91. Lord, we love you today. I'm so thankful for this chance to plug in with my prayer partners in the prayer closet beside the fire and around God's word. And I do pray a blessing uh, upon each and every brother and sister that uh, joins me. <clears throat> I pray that you'll give them a, uh, a good day today. And I pray specifically that you'll speak to us uh, about what the psalmist brings up in these two verses about fear. Uh, there seems to be uh, no break when it comes to fear. It can hit us in the middle of the night, it can have it hit us in the middle of the day, in the morning, in the evening, on many fronts. And uh, help us from your word to grasp an appropriate um, <coughs> understanding of fear. Some of it's healthy, some of it's not. Uh, give us an insight into your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's jump in. Psalm 91, verse 5, you will not fear, you will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A couple of things that just, you know, jump out at me, and I mentioned them in the prayer. Fear can hit us at any time in the middle of the night, uh, in the day, in the darkness, at noon. Fear can hit us. I was coming in uh, to the church earlier this morning, and I happened to have 
the radio on and one of my mentors from a distance. I loved to listen to his sermons and I'll be uh, transparent enough to say I stole some of his uh, illustrations for my sermons uh, was Adrian Rogers. I loved to hear him. I loved his voice. Uh, he was a baritone. It sounded like you were listening to God every time you listened to Adrian Rogers preach. And uh, this morning he was talking about the difference between healthy fear and sinful fear. There is a healthy fear, a God-instilled fear uh, that helps protect us from uh, danger, from harm, from sin. And he likened it to a thunderstorm where there's thunderclaps and lightning everywhere, maybe, uh, you know, wind and strong rain and and it initiates a fear, a, a, a caution, and you want to seek shelter. And then, you know, the fear, the storm comes, it hits, and then it's over. And you move on. Versus a kind of storm that just hangs there. It's, it's a, a grayness. It, it remind, when you described it, it reminded me of winter back in Indiana. You know, in Indiana, come around November and December, March, December, uh, January, February, there was just this grayness. You seldom saw the blue sky. You seldom saw the sun. It was just a heavy darkness that would hang there. And it was kind of depressing. Um, uh, that was kind of the temperature. That was kind of the weather, uh, typical weather in at that time of year. And... There's a storm that's kind of like that, just a heaviness. It never lifts. That's what uh, Adrian Rogers was preaching toward, to be careful of. That kind of fear that just lingers and hangs there can uh, destroy our, our spiritual health and well-being, and it leads to worry and all kinds of other things that we, we come to the point we're no longer trusting. We're no longer trusting the Lord. I remember um, uh, I watched, uh, I think it was Band of Brothers, and uh, Private Blythe was having a conversation with Lieutenant Spears after the uh, D-Day was over. They were still, uh, you know, on the front lines, uh, but the, the worst of it, the running across that beach uh, was over. And uh, Blythe was confiding in, Cap in uh, Lieutenant Spears, who has this reputation of being fearless. You know, he just charges hell with a water pistol. And he, uh, he uh, single-handedly uh, captured several Germans. And the rumors were about him were all over the place. And so he, uh, Blythe confesses to him that, that when he got on that beach, he honkered down in this hole and just stayed there the whole time until it was over. And, uh, you know, he, and uh, Spears comes back to him, responds to him. He says, well, you know what your problem is? You're, you think you're going to live through this. You still think you have a chance of living through this. Now, he didn't, he didn't word it this way, but this was his message. You need to give up on that. You need to surrender that. You're a soldier, and, you know, the chances are really, really good. You're not going to make it through. The sooner you accept that, the better you're going to be able to function as a soldier. And I'm not sure that was the greatest advice in the world, but it did remind me of the goal of every Christian is to die to self, to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Not, not a uh, pessimistic giving up on life, but surrendering that life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and, uh, and to take whatever comes in his Lordship and trust that he will use whatever comes for his purpose and for his glory. That does not mean that every uh, attack, every storm is of the Lord. I really struggle with that theology. It means we live in an imperfect world, whether we have Jesus in our heart or not, 
we all live in an imperfect world where there are storms. And we can and those storms can make us fearful. But we surrender our, our lives to Christ. We trust Christ. Whatever storm comes, we face it with Christ, not, not in our own strength, not in our own courage, but with him and trust him that he'll use us for whatever purpose in that storm. In that regard, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of a parallel. It's a surrendering. Blythe uh, took that to heart and uh, he overcame his fear. Now, unfortunately, as was the case with many of those men on the front lines during World War II, uh, he did succumb in another battle further down the road. He was killed, but not before he overcame his fear and was functioning like the soldier he was trained to be. You know, uh, one of the lives that has uh, challenged me a lot is Kathy's uncle, uh, Hal Birchall, one of the best soul winners I ever saw in my life. He's a medical doctor. He's been a missionary doctor on many occasions and uh, gone to the mission field, raised their kids on the mission field um, for a, part, a portion of their lives. Um, one of the most talented men in my in my uh, room. There's not a wall that doesn't have one of his oil paintings on it. And a beautiful musician, he can get behind the keyboard, and make it sing, make it walk. Um, he's one of the most surrendered men I've ever met. Just lost his wife this year. Uh, broke his heart. Uh, preached the message uh, during the funeral. And now he's facing life alone. And, uh, you know, it'd be easy to uh, just pull up the sheets, become a hermit, and uh, tiptoe to the grave. But he doesn't want to do that. And God believes, or he believes that God has called him back to the mission field. He's, he's almost 90 years old. And he's he's lined up all of his life insurance. He's lined up all of his... Uh, tied up all of his loose ends, he he expects to die on that mission field. And uh, I think there's there, there's not a pessimism there. In fact, there's a great victory there. But he's not afraid. So many of us, especially us guys, when we lose our, our wives, life takes on a, a loneliness and a depression and a fear. And it was good for me to see how. Still charging hell uh, with a water pistol, like, like Caleb charging, you know, going up to claim his promised land. This old man. Uh, it was a Caleb spirit. We're called to have that kind of spirit. We are not called to live in fear. There's some fear that's God-given. But this ongoing fear and pessimism is not of the Lord. We can have great joy, even when the thunder is 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 raging and the the lightning. We can have joy because we're not facing that thunderstorm alone. Whether it's at midnight or in midday, Jesus is with us. Lord Jesus, help us to overcome a spirit of fear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord bless you. That kind of helped me. I hope it helped you. Have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow.